Higher than average rainfall and associated extensive flooding have resulted in producers in the central west having to manage paddocks over the summer period where crop and pastures have been lost. Weed burdens in these paddocks may be higher than usual due to lack of ground cover and unusual weeds may also be detected with flood waters transporting weed seeds long distances. Producers have two main options in managing these paddocks over summer. Firstly, they may choose to fallow affected paddocks over summer prior to planting a crop or pasture next year. In this case, maintaining a clean, weed-free fallow is vital in maintaining moisture and nutrients for next season. Another really relevant issue for this coming year is obviously we had a lot of flooded country within the region. Um, the benefits of that um, are going to be that you've actually got some deep soil moisture. So the only way that we can lose that deep soil moisture, we won't lose it through evaporation, uh, we'll only lose it if we've got a summer weed that can actually transpire that moisture back out. So within your flooded country, uh, really important to try and conserve that deep moisture by controlling your summer weeds. Another issue is going to be uh, with a lot of the flooding uh, within the region is going to be denitrification. So obviously there would have been some denitrification losses uh, during the season due to large areas being inundated with moisture. Um, whilst, yes, we would have certainly lost some nitrogen with that, during the summer fallow period is probably an opportunity to try and catch up a little bit. So if we can keep that moisture there, um, get some warm temperatures to try and really drive that mineralisation process. Uh, but it would also be worthwhile taking some deep end soil tests um, a bit closer to sowing just to see exactly where you're up to with that. The second option for flood affected paddocks is to sow a summer forage crop. The main options available are Japanese millet and sorghums. These crops can provide valuable feed for livestock, but good management is required to maintain feed quality and reduce possible toxicity problems associated with grazing. If you have not grown summer forage crops before, please seek agronomic advice on their growth and management. It is critical to seek advice on grazing summer forages to optimise livestock performance and avoid possible animal health issues. There's a lot, there's a lot of interest at the moment in grazing either millets or forage sorghums in case of people that have been flood affected to try and overcome a short term feed shortage or even just to take advantage of the moist soil conditions that we've got. If people are choosing to grow whether a millet or a sorghum, they need to be a little bit aware about the consequences of feeding them. Millets being Japanese millets, um, the main one being throw, is pretty safe. It's, it's a multiple cut option and in some ways probably grows a little bit similar to ryegrass. When grazing forage sorghums, it's necessary to be a little bit more careful with your, with your management. Forage sorghums contain prussic acid, which can be toxic to livestock. General principles for grazing forage sorghums are not to graze at less than two foot or 60 centimetres in height, and to avoid drought stressed or other stressed crops, which, which um, may contain higher levels of prussic acid. The other issue to consider with forage sorghums is that as they mature and get taller, they become uh, their quality declines quite quickly. So once they reach about 80 or 90 centimetres in height, um, and certainly a metre in height, from that point on they'll grow very quickly but their quality will decline. So managing them to maintain quality can be difficult without a lot of stock. Summer forage crops may also assist in controlling problem summer weeds. In a single experiment at Wagga during the 2015-16 season, uh, we grew plots of Shiroi Japanese millet to see how they competed against summer growing weeds. The main summer growing weed that we found was hairy penny or witchgrass as it's more correctly known. What we found that was where we had Japanese millet the level of witchgrass in the plots was no different to those which we'd sprayed out with Roundup. 
and much less than untreated POTS at all. So in that single occasion, we found that Japanese millet outcompeted American witchgrass or witchgrass and was a significant weed control method. In addition, we managed to get three cuts off the, the millet, each of which was fairly high quality and had the potential to, for, for feeding to lambs. We estimated after cost of production that the gross margin on growing those crops was about $509 a hectare if fed to lambs. Whether you choose to maintain a fallow or grow a summer forage crop on flood affected paddocks, it is vital to be vigilant in controlling the likely higher than normal weed burden to maintain nutrients and moisture for next season. If you find any weeds that you can't identify, please contact Central West Local Land Services for assistance. Check our website and social media for upcoming information on crop and longer term pasture options for flood affected paddocks.